Hey everybody, Nettie Owens here with Safari Solutions and I've brought with me my favorite person to talk about LinkedIn and today is and right now is like the best time to be learning about LinkedIn, to be getting onto LinkedIn. I have with me Mark Firth. Hello and everybody. <laughs> he is uh, the, the person that you really need to know if you're if you're even thinking about trying to generate leads here. Um, he helps solopreneurs consistently book qualified calls using LinkedIn combined with EBI, Emotional Brand Intelligence. He's been doing it since 2017 and he has a background in corporate. He's my go-to guy and uh, what I love about you, Mark, is that you're constantly updating with what's new and working you like there are people who are talking about linkedin from six months ago 12 months ago and it's a different landscape so oh, i yeah, love totally. that always innovating totally. so there's people just flooding on to linkedin right now and um why what what's causing this influx i think it's a combination of two things externally obviously the the advance meaning that we can't do as many stage events, we can't go network as much, you know, the no contact economy, I've heard it described as, that means LinkedIn is kind of the um, natural alternative. And the second thing, which not so many people know, is that June the 1st, 2020, LinkedIn got a new CEO, Ryan Rolansky. He quickly made a lot of changes to the platform. They're moving the platform. They changed the content to algorithms, so it's the same as Facebook. They tried to change engagement in the feed. So basically, I, I, I'm not a betting man, but if I was, I would say he's modeling the Facebook model, but for business, and we know that works. So that's why I think uh, people are going on there, and not only going on there, they're spending more time on there. And you've probably noticed that as well, Nettie, with your, with your videos. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's my intention to become uh, <laughs> able to do LinkedIn Live, but in the meantime, Me posting as many. <laughs> I'm a special child, though. You have to apply to LinkedIn, and uh, it takes time. I know. I need to. Uh, I need to send them something that they would love. I think, and then maybe they'll yeah. let me in <laughs> a special gift, right? Well, I didn't even know that. Uh, so thank you for for sharing that. I hadn't realized, um, you know, the transitions and and why they were making them. But I think oh, you're yeah. right. We've got stories coming. It's, it's no secret they've spoken about it, like Facebook stories, and they basically the transition is going from the messenger part of the application to the content feed. Um, and that's just a natural progression you see on all platforms, and that's good for me, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, is there a big change from how LinkedIn was, like how you used LinkedIn even a year ago to what it looks like now? I think the main change has been this, because so many people have gone to the platform, and, you know, we're in the internet marketing world, and the internet marketing world, I, I, I'm to a certain degree part of it, although I try not to be, but... The, the, the reality is people push tactics. They push all these ideas that work mm -hmm. um, at the time, but then they, then everyone starts doing it, and then people on the platforms get tired of it. So I think the, the, the example of that on LinkedIn was in 2017, you know, that's when really automation started. And we have all mm -hmm. these tools. If you're watching and don't know what automation is, it means you send the same message in a sequence to everybody regardless of who they are, and you, you sit back on your sofa, the theory being, and eat Doritos while the calls come in. <laughs> um, but as with anything, when, when something's new, it works. When a tactic's new, it works. But when, but when everyone's doing it, it then becomes noise, and noise by, by default is ignored. Mm -hmm. So LinkedIn has also changed very much in the last, I would say, six to 12 months in terms of people are looking for more personal connection on the platform. They're kind of not getting sucked into the pitches and, and the good copywriting. They want to build a relationship. And I just read Russell Brunson's new book, Traffic Secrets, which is fantastic, by the way. Yeah. Um, I have no affiliation with it, but he was talking about if you want to be successful on the platform, you want to go with the flow of what the platform wants. And LinkedIn mm -hmm. wants to build authentic relationships. It doesn't want you to spam the hell out of your audience. You know, and that's, that's what I believe. Just go it's with the flow true. and you'll be good in the long term. So, I mean, kind of relationship building seems to be the way yeah. of marketing, period. Like right now, that's the way. Yeah. It's storytelling and yep. building relationships. Correct. Um, how do you feel like people can take advantage of, or maybe take advantage is not the right word, but utilize um, LinkedIn and and the influx of people coming on and utilizing this platform? All right, I always give a very little story when someone an, an asks that question or an analogy, really. I want yeah. you to imagine it's pre, you know, what's going on at the moment and we're in a busy downtown on a Wednesday afternoon. We go into a bank and there's a line of people waiting to see the teller. 
if you walk to the front of that line and stand in front of the first person without saying anything, you're going to upset some people, right? That's just not right. the way people do things. Let's replay, replay that scenario. Let's imagine you walk into that same bank. You've got a two-year-old in your arm here. You're pushing a stroller with a kid crying. There's a dog outside on the railings barking. And you look at everyone in the line look, say, look, I'm terribly sorry. You don't have to do this, but um, we're in a rush. We're on our way to grandma's. Um, I don't want to inflict upon you these screaming kids for, for 20 minutes. Would we be able to just jump this one to the front of the line? You're not guaranteed a favorable response, but you are certainly, um, the probability is higher. And the difference mm -hmm. between those two scenarios is there's context for the action. There's context. So, so you're not suggesting that we just yeah. bring the screaming kids into every yeah. meeting, right? <laughs> exactly. But <laughs> LinkedIn is very different to Facebook and any social media platform because of the amount of information in the profiles and the amount of access you can get to people's posts and content and who they follow. It's, it's very distinct yeah. in that in that respect. And that gives us a ton of context mm -hmm. and reason to start conversations. You know what I mean? Why yeah, absolutely. Messages when you've got thousands of words and data points and you know what they've been doing for the last 10 years, you know? So that's, that's my advice. Use context to start the conversation. Look at their profile, ask them a question about something they did in the past of which you have genuine interest. You can't go wrong. People right. think Right. Not faking it, but actually being curious and interested yeah. in, and moving forward like like you would if you actually met that person in real life. <laughs> exactly. And it's not a tactic. It's humans that our brains haven't changed that much in a few millennia. Well, you know, relatively speaking, we still have the same needs, wants and desires and desire to feel needed and not want to be rejected and not want to feel taken advantage of. So instead of looking for these cheap tactics and the message that works for everyone, just base it on real life, you know, as simple as that. I know this can be totally confusing for some folks because they're looking for that magic pill. So it doesn't exist. Yeah, <laughs> it oh, doesn't work exist. Sorry. No, no, you are so right. <laughs> um, so, so somebody's going. I, I'm still not sure. Like I, I, I'm not quite sure how to break in. I don't know how to start a conversation. Maybe these folks are awkward in real life too. Any like quick tips about you know. How do you get that conversation going? Yeah, so we've dealt with introverts, extroverts, and everything in between. I test on Myers-Briggs. Some days I test INTP. Other days I test ENTP. I'm like in the middle, so I get it. We've had all sorts. It, it's ultimately about getting the right help, and it's not looking for that silver bullet. There is no silver bullet for lead generation. People sell a recipe when you need a cookbook. That cookbook needs to involve mindset. It needs to involve awareness of your personality. It needs to involve you know, getting awareness of your blind spots getting out your comfort zone, all sorts of stuff. You need to create that cookbook and take all those little bits out of it. If you've been going for the silver bullet of, of LinkedIn lead generation or lead generation in, in, in general, here's, the, here's a new flash. I've been in sales and lead generation since 2003. There is not, it doesn't exist. What exists is hard work, self-awareness. That's where emotional brand intelligence comes in because you, you're right. If you, if you are an introvert you, and you're aware of that, you're already you know, got a huge advantage because you do things in a certain way. That, that makes mm. it easier for you, you know? Yeah, that's a really great perspective. Can you dig in a little bit to emotional brand intelligence? And I know this isn't something that everybody's familiar with, so I'd love yeah. for you to explain it. So the headline is this, I mean, we're in a short interview, that a lot of the market talks about, yeah, I'll get you 10 to 20 meetings, autopilot, lead generating machine, all that hyperbole, right? And they're talking about external, um, external things to get to the point but everything begins with you simple as that if you don't have the emotional intelligence the emotional brand intelligence to know the way you should behave that's congruent with your brand congruent with what you're selling and indeed in alignment with your personality and your strengths you're going to struggle because if you're an introvert and someone's asking you to do extrovert stuff i don't care who you are you're gonna, you're gonna it's gonna be difficult do you know what i mean it's not in your zone of genius so it's about having that awareness of who you are and then combining it with all the external stuff and, mm -hmm. and that's what we see working I love that. I, I talk about this when I when I talk about people aligning their vision, their mission, and their core yeah. values, and then making sure that everything, their time, yeah. their systems all line up uh, in accordance with that. So if folks want to reach out to you, what's the best way to contact you? There, or you can find <laughs> me on markfirthonline.com. Mark Firth, obviously on LinkedIn, Facebook, they're my two platforms of choice. Um, yeah, reach out. Happy to chat. Awesome. And definitely take him up on that offer. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Mark. And thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.